Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balcon. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Blood Angel Sergeant Primaris Intercessor. So the first colour we're going to use on him is going to be Vallejo Black. Now you can see that the holster is painted black there. That was because I didn't actually have a red sprayed holster, so I just used a bare plastic one. Gave that a quick lick of paint before we started the video. Now the Blood Angel himself has been sprayed with Halford's Red Primer. So it's not an exact match for Mephiston Red, which is usually what I'd spray them with. But it was out of Mephiston Red, so just use the Red Primer. So you want to go through all of the little areas that are black, paint them up, and then once you've got the nice smooth black layer on there, move on to the next colour. Now we're going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Warpstone Glow. I'm going to use this just to do the screen on his little computer. Now I'll pop back on and do another little bit of Warpstone Glow for the eye lens on his bionic eye, so you can do that now if you want to. And now it's onto Citadel Mephiston Red. I'm going to use that to do the teardrop on his shoulder pad. Like so. Now it's Vallejo Model Air Silver. I'm going to use this to do all the silvery metallic, so all the metal parts on his bolt gun. Any little details like the exhaust on his power pack. Just give them a nice smooth coat of the Model Air Chrome. And then once that's finished, we can go on to the next one. It's worth taking your time with this layer. If you take your time a bit, stop it going onto the other layers, it saves having to repaint like the black on the bolt gun and things like that. But if you do go onto the black, just use a little bit of black that you've previously used, touch that up before we move on to the next layer. Now I'm going to use a little bit of gold, it's Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm just going to use that to do the bolt rounds inside the magazine there. Like so. I'm going to use Citadel Ricard Flesh. I'm going to use this to do his hair. That's a very interesting model of Blood Angel. I've never painted one before, other than maybe the Space Hulk ones. And what I found painting this guy was there's loads and loads of little tiny layers on it. Whereas some models you'll be using a lot of one colour for ages and ages and ages. On this guy, it seemed to have loads and loads of shorter like video sections because it was like lots of small areas of colour. So like the hair, the face, the blood drop, the little bit of gold, a little bit of black. So quite an interesting model to paint. So with that done, we're now going to paint his skin and we're going to use Citadel Kislev Flesh. I use this one because he's a blood angel, they tend to have the paler skin. So we've gone for this colour rather than one of the Vallejo ones. Make a bit of a change. A nice smooth layer of that. Next up, we're going to use the Warpstone Glow again. This is just to do the eye lens on his bionic eye. As I say, it's a really small section. This. So now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Avalon Sunset, and it's just to do the knee pad. Now, the Blood Angels, the knee pad denotes the squad number of them. Well, their company number is represented by the blood drop colour and number on the shoulder pad. Now we're going to shade all the red. We're going to use Citadel Duty Violet. And say the blood drop colour and number, I mean the number of blood drops there, not a specific number, on the shoulder pad. So the Duty Violet, you do want to go into all the details here. Make sure you get it into all of the recesses. Doesn't matter if you go onto the red too much, you can just lather it on there if you want to. I'm trying to be a little bit more careful. Just get it around the areas I really needed to. As I say it doesn't matter too much there, you can see I've slopped a load over the knee, but that won't affect the overall model. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange. I'm going to use that just to do around the edges of the knee pad. Now 
and onto the next layer. I'm going to use Citadel Cassandora Yellow just to do his hair. Like so. Now it's a little bit of Citadel BL Tan Green. I'm going to use this to do the eye lens on the bionic eye and also the computer screen on his wrist. Like so. Now for a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade, we're just going to do his skin on his face. You don't want this going on really, really thick. Enough that it sits in the details, but not enough that it really darkens that skin. Going on for a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. This is going to go on to the bolt rounds in the magazine. So yet again, another very, very quick layer. Now Citadel Null Oil, We're going to be to do all the silver metallics. So like you did with the red, you can really get that all over the silver metallics. It brings out the detail, dulls down the shine, but leaves it shiny enough that I tend not to do anything with it afterwards. And onto the next layer once that's finished. Use a little bit of Citadel and the Fist on red now. And here we're going to be going over all of the armor panels. So we're going to take time going around them, leave the Druchi Violet in the recesses, and give this a nice layer of my fist on red, which is a nice base colour for the Blood Angels. You can see that red really taking hold and brightening up the colours of him. Now we're going to highlight that using Evil Sun Scarlet. And the way I do the highlights as always, you want to think about where the light is coming down from above and it's going to illuminate the sections of his armour. So you don't want to be doing the underside of his legs, things like that. You want to keep the highlights onto the areas where the light will be catching it. You can see the Evil Sun Scarlet really starts to brighten up that red and give it that kind of vague orangey colour. With the next highlight, we'll bring that orange out further. Now with that layer done, you can see the red's really bright now. We're going to add a little bit of Fire Dragon Bright to the Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm just going to start doing some highlights on the red. Now there's mainly going to be highlights hitting the edges of the red because the Evil Sun Scarlet brings the armour out enough. So you don't really need to do too much highlight into that. So you can see here, I'm adding it to the edges. It'll make it stand out, not every single edge. Because the light wouldn't catch every single edge in that way. So you want to think about which edges will be catching the light. Make sure you highlight those ones. Now we're moving on to Vallejo Black once more. I'm just going to touch up any areas of black which may have been affected by another colour. So you might add a little bit of red or the silvers in there. So you just want to touch them up, make sure that you've got a nice smooth black layer for the highlights. As I say, it's the first time I've painted the Blood Angel in ages, I really did enjoy it. I think the colours re work really, really well together. Once more, if you do manage to get a bit of the black onto the red or any other colour, then you can just go over that. Just to tidy up the edges and that. So to highlight the black, we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo German Grey. It's a very, very dark grey colour. I do enjoy it and like to put it on to highlight the black. So you want to be leaving enough of the black there that you can still see it. And you want to be highlighting with the German Grey very carefully just to lighten up those areas. You can see already how it brings out the colours and brings out the details by highlighting like this. So you want to be doing this on the chest eagle, a little bit on the shoulder pad on the 
joins between the armour and on a bolt gun. So now I'm going to mix a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey with the German Grey, which I don't usually tend to do because it's quite a different colour. I wanted to blend it in a little bit on the shoulder pad there, so the shoulder pad and the holster aren't too vividly different between the German Grey and the Mechanica Standard Grey. So we're going to do a highlight with the Mechanica Standard Grey and the German Grey. Like so. Now I'm just going to use some Seraphim Sepia to do the scroll work here, which I failed to do with the shades. So just did a little bit of shading on that. And back to the greys. Just going to use Mechanica Standard Grey. And we're just using the pure Mechanica Standard Grey now. And we're just going to do the final highlights on all of the black areas. So this includes the holster and all the eagles. The Aquilas, the chapter badge, that kind of thing. Just going to make sure that they get the final highlight just to bring out those details and really make them stand out. Take your time doing them. I'm using a Wargamer character brush from Army Painter here. I really do like the points on those. Once you've finished, we'll move on to the next colour. Going on to his knee pad now, we're going to use Citadel Avaland Sunset. Just going to reapply some of that and leave the shades in the recesses and also towards the bottom of the knee pad. Like so. Just checking that there to see if we caught all the edges and made it a decent yellow. Make sure there's no streaks. Now I'm going to put a little bit of Vallejo White in with the Avalon Sunset and just do a little highlight on that knee pad. Like so. I'm going to detail the knee pad. We're going to use Citadel Mephist on red. That's the marking to show he's in the 16th squad. With that particular battle company. So here I'm doing a very thin X across the knee. And once you've got the X in the place where you want it to, you can just widen that up with the red very carefully. Widen that, spread out the X so it is covering the air you want it to. Also going to apply a little bit of my fist on red to the teardrop on the shoulder pad there too while we've got it going. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Squig Orange. I'm just going to highlight the top part of the red there. Down to the point where you did the highlight on the yellow so that you've got the highlights going to the same area. Like so. Now we're going to do his company markings. So we're going to use the white to do the teardrop on the shoulder. Because to do the teardrop, I just do a straight line down. Fan that out into almost like a open-ended triangle, like so, and then just do a curve at the bottom, and that will give you the teardrop shape. Once you've finished that, if you do do any overspill, just use a little bit of your black or greys, whatever you need to use, just to touch up the edges of it. Like so. Now we're going to work on the teardrop. So we've got the Mephist on red there. We're going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the Mephist on red. We're going to do the first highlight. We want to get that in a sort of like almost crescent ish going along the top edge and around the bottom of the wider end. We're going to add a little bit more white and you want to do that over about 50% of the area that you've just highlighted. Like so. Next we're going to use some pure Vallejo white. We're just going to do the final highlights on the gemstone on his shoulder pad. So we're going to do one spot on the rear side there. 
and a little bit down the bottom end and a little thin line right up the top there just to give that the proper reflection now we're going to start working on his hair and all we're going to use for this is Citadel Rackarth Flesh and you're going to try and pick out all the individual details on the hair itself again I'm using the Army Painter Wargamer character brush for this I'm doing it a little bit rough and ready so when you've got each of the hair bits done like this you can then go back and smooth it out and shrink down some of the areas of yellow and that will give it more of the blonde look rather than the yellow look if you just do it all rough like this you will have a lot of yellow showing through and the hair will look quite bright and gaudy so you do want to go back and just shrink down some of the gaps between the pieces widen some of the recast flesh and then the hair will look a bit more blonde Now we're going to use some Kislev Flesh and start working on his face. We're going to reapply this but leaving the Reichland Flesh Shade in the recesses. Again it's the Army Painter Wargamer character brush we're using here. You can usually tell by the silver bit at the end that holds the bristles. And we're just gently highlighting all the areas on the top that would be catching the light more. So you're leaving the shades in the recesses and the areas which are covered by details above. And now add a little bit of Vallejo white to the Kislev flesh. And we're just going to start highlighting the top edges of the areas we've just highlighted. Now this is only a uh, two layers to do his skin, but the effect's pretty good. like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White to do his eyeball. So we've turned him onto his side so you can get that nice downward stroke with the brush and you're just going to gently apply a little bit of white onto the front there. Now you turn him to the side and just add a little bit of white to the side there so you've got the whole eyeball painted. Now all we're going to do here is add the pupil to his eye using a little spot of black. Now when I'm painting this I do actually get a little bit of black on his lower eyelid and his upper eyelid. But if you do that I'm going to show you how I touch that back up again. So you can see there it's onto the lower eyelid, it's slightly too big. So now all we're doing is using some of the previous colours that we've used for his eyelids. And we're just going to touch them up and get rid of that so that you've got the nice pupil on the eye and also none of the pupil on the eyelid like so so we're going to start working on his face a little bit more here so we're using Vallejo red wash I'm just going to use that to gently colour his lips and around his eyes a little bit now it's a lot lighter than the Caribbean Crimson if you use the Caribbean Crimson it will darken the lips a lot because the Blood Angels are usually pretty pale faced we're using a little bit of this just to give a bit of colour to around his eye and his lips there and I'm now going to use a little spot of Caribbean Crimson just to put a thin line around the Bionic which is attached to his face you always think if you've got a big bit of metal like that clamped to your face there's going to be a bit of rawness around where the skin joins the metal Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Warpstone Glow and we're going to start working on the Bionic Eye again. So you're going to give this a pretty good colour, leave a little bit of the shade in the top right of the lens there. We're going to add a little bit of white to the Warpstone Glow. And we're going to sort of do a crescent in the bottom left of the lens. I'm going to take up maybe about a third of the lens with that crescent. Add a little bit more white to that mix and we're going to do about 50% of that previous crescent with the new mix. Like so. We're going to add a little bit more white and do one final little bit there. Like so. And 
And then finally, we're going to use a little spot of pure white. I'm going to tap that in the top right hand corner so you've got a little reflection of light in the top right hand corner there and a little tiny bit of white in the bottom left. Like so. So it's onto Citadel lead belt now. And we're just going to touch up around the edge of the lens on his bionic eye and the reason we're not using the chrome is we've got the shade on there so you don't want to use the chrome and have a really really bright casing around the lens we're using lead belts because it's quite a dark silver color and it'll put it pretty much to the shaded chrome color now onto rakarth flesh again we're just going to do this little bit of scroll work on his bolter Apply that, making sure you leave some of the seraphim sepia in the recesses. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the Rakarth flesh. Just highlight what we've just coloured there. Now we're going to add a spot more white to the previous mix. And just give that one final highlight like so now here we're going to just add a little bit of black and paint ball across the scroll work now as always I always start in the middle and work my way out with the letters so we're going to put the two A's in there work on the B at the end and the L at the other end. Like so. Now we're going to use warp stone glow again and we're just going to work on the little computer screen. So we're just going to recolor the whole screen with that. Making sure you've got the BL tan green around the edges of it. And what we're going to do is add a little bit of white to the warp stone glow. And we're just going to paint a couple of little crescents in the corner, like so, and do a few little horizontal lines so it looks like you've got a bit of a scanner going on. The lines coming through the scan there, and then the horizontal lines on the left are to represent text on the screen. And we're just going to use a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red to put a few little blips on the scanner, like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to paint the little sliding switch on the wrist computer there. And we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White just to paint up all the buttons on this little spot on top of his wrist there. And I'll just bring out those little details. Like so. that is the finished Blood Angels Primaris Intercessor. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.